Okay. Wait. Apparently, I. Oh, I'm <laughs> Are we live? Um, let me just check. I'm not sure because it's not telling me we are. So um, I have to be live yep, yep. on Facebook. Yeah? Yep, we're live. Okay. All right. So we're live. Okay. Welcome to Ditch the Diet and Face the Feelings live on Facebook then. Um, <laughs> today we are talking about um affirmations and the voice inside our head you know that tells us what we can and can't do um so unfortunately sammy d is not here with us we are hoping she's going to show up mm -hmm. um but unfortunately i haven't seen her in the groom room yet okay so wanted to start off asking you each mm -hmm. what is your favorite affirmation that helps you stay on track and keep that monkey mind silent when it's criticizing you and telling you you can't do it you're doing it all wrong and oh my god really you're going to eat that um <laughs> <laughs> What's, what's your favorite affirmation that just keeps you on track of, you know what, um, yes, I am going to eat this today, and I'm absolutely good with eating this today, because overall, I'm eating healthily, and I'm not, I'm not you're not going to give me a guilt trip about this. Um, but what are you using that, you know, keeps you on track of who you Sammy want? Joe. Yeah, Sammy okay. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> I like it, keep it simple. I'm just saying always, I'm enough, I'm enough, I'm enough. And that's the simplest thing to do. And you're not gonna yep. do yeah. I mean, if I go on to, to complicate it and, and invent some special affirmations, then I forget them and it's a whole <laughs> different problem. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I tend to agree with that. Hi, Sammy. We were a little worried about you. I was like, I thought sorry, you I'm late. I had a little bit of a crisis. Oh. So, um, yes, I'm here now. Oh, <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, my favorite affirmation is I am enough, but I also like to, to keep telling myself to breathe because that also helps me quite a lot. So it's breathe, yep. breathe, you know you're enough, you know you're enough, and then it's, it kind of then sorts itself out. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Sammy D, as you're going through your crisis, weren't quite here on time, what were you telling yourself? Uh, it wasn't mine. I was helping with someone else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, my crisis today, I suppose, if I was going to have one, was, uh, you know, dyeing my scalp pink. Oh, whoops. Okay, well done. Yes. <laughs> and, and all my greys. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. That's great. Big, awesome. A big theme of things. <laughs> yeah. So what do you tell yourself when you're trying to get yourself back on track? You're trying to, to keep yourself. I mean, OK, you know, for example, you're you're doing your train wreck in the kitchen and something's going wrong. Um, what, what are you telling yourself? then? Uh, I'm telling myself something positive. So what I wouldn't would have normally said if I was being mindless about the whole situation was. Oh, sod it, I'll get a pizza. I'll order in. You know, but what I'm 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 making it fun with myself and I'm constantly surprising myself that I'm making food that's edible and doesn't kill anyone. So um, you know, when something goes wrong, uh I kind of apply some mindfulness to it and say, okay, you know, everyone's all right, this is fun and mm -hmm. funny and so let's carry on with it rather than beat myself up I can't do it I'm not going to do it I give up I kind of say well that was a learning experience so as Bob Ross would say um there are no mistakes just happy accidents so you know that's that's kind of how I'm applying it 
Fabulous. Yeah. And, and I know that I <clears throat> often repeat to myself, I am enough, especially it's not so much about my food and exercise, but definitely in parenting as a parent, you know, I have to keep reminding myself of, you know, you don't need to have a meltdown. You've got this. She's only five years old. You're the adult here. Um, <laughs> you know, um, and it's that reminder of, I have everything I need inside of me, you know, um, to, to handle this. And even though she, if she's having a meltdown, I don't need to have a meltdown. That's not my meltdown. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, that, that's not mine. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, how do I want to handle this? What do I want to be here and now? Um, and it, yes, sometimes you're, you're going straight into, Oh my God, this is crazy. It's like, no, it's not. The okay. biggest thing that I've recognized, um, you know, is that in five years time, how big is this problem? Yeah. I mean, one of the ways I look at it is, is, <laughs> is uh, it sounds a bit weird, but look at it from space. You know, <laughs> how small it is. If you look at it from the middle of the universe, you know, it's completely, uh, you know, not important. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so at least that's what I say to myself when I get a parking mm -hmm. ticket, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the same can be said for, you know, if you make a mistake with your diet, you know, if you cave and end up eating the ice cream at your friend's house, so what? You know, it's really, it's not a huge thing. What's important is that you acknowledge it learn from it and not beat yourself up over it yeah, um, and now that you've just said that i'm sitting here going why am i so hungry and i just realized i cooked lunch and it's still sitting on the table that could be why i'm hungry yeah oh, okay th th thank you for clarifying that when you mentioned ice cream i was like well i'm hungry i'm like why oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> but then then what you said is so massively important as well is recognizing when you're hungry and recognizing when you're not hungry, you know, mm. and it's just stop and think rather than reach for <laughs> and put mm. in. Um, it's kind of, I mean, I can I can be sort of so busy in a day that I think, oh my god, I really need to eat because I'm actually hungry. Yeah, and that's quite a revelation for people that struggle with overeating, particularly mm -hmm. binge eating. Um, and those kind of things that they don't get those signals that they're hungry because they don't allow them to appear. You yeah. Know? yeah. So um, getting to that point where you recognize when your body is hungry by the physiological things that happen yes. to tell you you're hungry is a huge yeah. milestone. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Uh, it's it's when you are in that unhealthy relationship with food when you don't even know when you are hungry and when you are full and what are the normal sensations on the hunger scale yeah it, it can take so much time and so much practice to just feel when you are actually hungry on the normal scale and not starving and when you are comfortably full and not overstuffed that's why it's so important to have those affirmations that be like always, I'm good enough, I'm doing well, I'm doing well, because otherwise it's really hard, you know. If you spend years binging and you are now suddenly trying with every meal to be like, okay, am I now full? Am I not hungry? What is this? On? It can be really, really heavy. Mm -hmm. if you do that yeah. All alone. Yep. Yeah, I think... It's very important to understand that this change doesn't come in a day's time. Right. Like I remember that um, when I started eating mindfully, one of the biggest problems with me was I got to that point of being mindful and I already had food with me. So especially uh -huh. on my commute, because I'm alone, I used yeah. to always have something to eat because it was just easy to do that, you know, because I knew yes. that when I, when I got home, I wouldn't eat till nine o'clock. And then by then I was way too hungry. So I identified yeah. that I needed to eat something, but what that could be was up to me yeah. to choose. You know, I could eat a bar of chocolate or I could have a piece of fruit or I could have some sort of cereal bar or whatever. But 
first of all, it came to a point where I had, you know, the wrong kind of food with me. And then it was saying, okay, we know what we're doing now. So let's put this on the side, go home and quickly grab yeah. something healthy. Then it was yeah. getting the healthy food. And then the quantity of it as well. You know, do I yeah. really need two pieces of fruit or do I just need one? So there's yeah. a lot that happens. And when you make a mistake, you've got to stop and think that this is not the end of it. Yeah. You know, even if you do eat the wrong sort of food, you can ask yourself, mm-hmm. what's the worst that's going to happen out of this? I ate a bar yeah. of chocolate, so what? Tomorrow, yeah. Absolutely. I'll be better. I'll yeah. be better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I can manage this. Yeah, I, and I have to express, I mean, that's so important uh, what Shweta said, because for 20-odd years, Um, the first thing I was doing when I woke up in the morning before my head ever even left the pillow was saying to myself, oh, you great fat cow, you know, what what was that you ate yesterday? You're worthless, you're crap, you can't do it. Every single day. Even that becomes a voice in your head. Exactly. And, and, you know, and and that's what you're telling yourself. And any time you make any mistake you know that's the voice yeah and it was the first thing I did when I woke up in the morning was critically analyze what I ate the day before and and that is just a self-fulfilling prophecy really yeah Um, yeah (laughs) last year I wake up and I pull a silly face or I say I'm okay or I say today's gonna be good or I get a silly song in my head like you know Copacabana by Barry Manilow. Don't know where that came from. But anything <laughs> other than what did you eat yesterday, you fat cow? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Terrible stuff yeah. I was saying. So, I mean, that is a real huge, huge thing. Um, yeah. To be able to reprogram your brain to mm-hmm. you know, say something yeah. out. Now that you mentioned that, I have to share mine because it's, it's not funny, but it's also sad. Mine was, I get fat even if I breathe. And oh. <laughs> horrible. And I spent years repeating that to anyone who would listen, you know. It's the best if I don't eat anything at all. I get fat even if I breathe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. It's really yeah. Fascinating to see how far that mean girl in your head can go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, think- and you're right, that mean girl, that mean girl that's that that that's inside of us. And you know, if we talked to somebody else this way, they'd mm-hmm. probably punch us in in the face. Yeah. <laughs> it would be in the newspapers the next day. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. Would. yeah. It really would. Yeah. 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 And I think the culture now, because of the whole diet culture, if you can't control what you eat and how you eat, then what else can you control in your life? So it goes from, I can't control my food. I'm such a loser there. I must be a loser everywhere else. And it, yes. it's yes. very easy for that belief to spread. And that negative spiral that may start with a bar of chocolate might actually, mm-hmm. you know, end up with you being in a toilet crying over something ridiculous like your three-year-old self, for example you know so it's um it's the the focus to keep it to that it just goes away it just kind of spreads like something and just you know you go in your head into a space where you're you believe you actually believe that if you don't control food you can't control anything else in your life absolutely that's uh, absolutely true yeah. And and and, the, and what you're telling yourself about that part of your life is basically what you're telling yourself about yourself, you know. And so that inner voice, you know, that affirmation that you're using for whatever, it's, mm-hmm. I mean, because we talk about affirmations, but even if you're calling yourself a stupid cow, that is an affirmation. It's not yeah. a good affirmation. Right. It is. Okay. Yeah. But it is an affirmation. That is the voice that you are always going to hear. And so, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. I can remember I used to do something. I go, stupid, 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 you know. Um, and then, of course, it's like, well, Negative wait a EFT. <laughs> 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 you know, is that really what I want to be telling myself? No, it's not, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, no. 
But that becomes, you know, whatever you are constantly telling yourself, whether it's good or it's bad, it becomes that inner voice, that that critic that is constantly yeah. going to be talking to you. And so, you know, when we're talking about, you know, um, it, food, weight, exercise, anything, you know, if you're not dealing with that inner critic, if you're not dealing with that mindset work, mm -hmm. um, you're not dealing with all the problem. Yeah. You're only yep. looking, I mean, because realistically food is not the problem. The food's <laughs> just sitting there. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it's not the problem. The problem yeah. is in here, the problems in my body, the problem is what I'm not dealing with or facing, you know, um, my, on both sides of my family, there's heart issues. I had a hole in my heart, heart murmur when I was born. And one of the things I was told I had to have at 40 was go for a checkup. And I mm -hmm. was like terrified of, oh my God, you know, what are they going to find? I went, they found nothing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with my heart. Okay. But it took me months to pluck up the courage to go do a checkup just to find out there's nothing wrong, you know, and it's just mm -hmm. one of those situations where you sit there going, you know, what are you telling yourself? What was I telling myself of, oh, there has to be something wrong because this runs in the family. I mean, plus ultimately you could say that these, the inner mean girl or oh boy, it steals, it steals your life. It steals. Absolutely, it steals the happiness. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, and you, you spent months worrying about going for a checkup. I mean, mm -hmm. how else could, have the, could those months have been spent? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And how many times does that replay in your mind yeah. and, and you're replaying something that hasn't even happened? You're, it's not mm -hmm. even a memory. It's just you replaying. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so strong, and you yeah. know, yeah. I wish everyone knew about it. <laughs> mm -hmm, definitely. Yeah. And and when you are saying yourself so many negative things, it it becomes your reality because that's all you see and what you focus on, and you mm -hmm. know where the focus goes, energy flows, and and it's mind blowing what kind of effect just what you are saying to yourself has. It, it creates your entire life. Yeah. 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 And so yeah. when we talk about face the feelings, this is part of it. This is part of mm -hmm. the feelings you've got to face. You know, yeah. it's it's not just what am I eating? It's, it's what am I telling myself about food, about my body, about myself? Yeah. What are those feelings that I have? And what am I going to do about it? How am I going to change that? And also, mm -hmm. we are so much more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> than what we put in our mouths and we mm -hmm. don't acknowledge that you know mm -hmm. yeah. um it's like what was what was said earlier you know if we fail at dieting we fail at everything you know yeah. biggest lie ever and it's a real real shame that it is such a, a common thing mm -hmm. yeah. so in closing, because we have literally five minutes left. I don't know where this half hour goes. It just flies by. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like we just started talking. It's like, oh my goodness, really? Um, okay. How did you get started on changing that mindset? If you go back to when you really started noticing that mindset, when you really started doing that work, what was... What were the first steps that you take to change that? Well, if we are talking affirmations, I would suggest just choosing one. And that one, the best one is I am enough because it covers so much. Every, every relationship, it can be covered with I am enough. And put it everywhere. Put it on the screen, on the bathroom mirror, on the fridge, everywhere that you can see it as much as possible because the more you see it, the better it sinks in the mind and then it becomes truth because if you spent years telling yourself I'm a stupid fat cow, it's, it's going to take some time to change that. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do it is to 
to see the river that you are in now. Yeah. And you yeah. also want to move where you've put it because your brain has this amazing way of once it's seen it somewhere for five to 10 days, it stops seeing it. It stops noticing. So you want to move it around. I have a friend that does um, post-its. And so every couple of days she moves those post-its to somewhere different so that she starts seeing them again, you know, so that you're not blindly walking past that. And I know that I do that, but I also say it out loud. I don't care how crazy you think I am. I'm telling myself that, you know, I'm, I'm looking in the mirror and it's on the mirror and I'm, I'm saying that Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's, it's opposed to on my desk. I'm sitting down, I'm reading it out loud. Um, And, and that work, how important that is. So how about you, Shweta? Um, I started off with um, I'm enough. It took me a really, really long time to say it. And it was um, basically an argument with my husband when he was the one who first said it to me. Why do you need to do this to yourself? You're enough. You know, what part of this life makes you feel like you're inadequate in any way or form? And he was angry because six weeks into having our son, I wanted to start dieting. And he, he just went crazy angry. He was just like, this is not happening. Because you need to recover and restricting food right now is the craziest thing you could do. And I was just like, but everyone wants to do this, you know. And then he just went, you know, he went ballistic. And the only thing I remember from that conversation is, but you're enough, you know. And that's when it hit me. And that's when I started looking at myself very differently. So it was like a light bulb moment at that point going, yes, what is wrong with me? You know, why can't I see what he's seeing? Yeah. And what everyone else is saying, you know, it's such a happy life, then why don't yeah. I feel it? And then that journey started. And now I'm enough is literally everywhere in the house. I even have a ring that says enough on there. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's everywhere now. And um, from there, then there's been more affirmations that come that, that have come up. I love myself. I'm able, I can handle everything because um, overwhelm hits me very quickly. So I need to sort of step back and say that I can handle everything and you know it's all gonna be fine so that was like my favorite affirmation how about you Sammy D Uh, my final word would be to first of all apply mindfulness to acknowledge that you're saying these negative things in the first place so you need to recognize them and stop and acknowledge that you just said that to yourself and then decide not to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I know one of the things that I started with was saying, well, if I loved myself, what would I tell myself? Yeah. You know, um, asking myself the question. Okay. Yeah. So I just said this, but if I loved myself, how would I speak to myself? And yeah. changing that, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. consciously, like you said, taking notice of what I just said and going, oh, wait a minute, if I loved myself, what would I be telling myself? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and that changed for me very much once I had a daughter and I was like, I do not want my daughter growing up with all of my hangups about my body, my food, you know, all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Of, no, 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 no. This is not how I want her to relate to food, to relate to her body. Um mm-hmm. And especially because, you know, I'm 40 something and I was looking at my photos of my mom at 40 and she always used to say she was fat. She always used to complain about how overweight she was. And I'm looking at these photos going, she's athletic, she's healthy. Um, she was not chubby. She was not fat. She was not overweight. Yes. She was big busted and big hip, but that was her body. That Yay. was not that. Okay. Yeah. She was a fit woman. And I'm looking at her going, oh my God, that's me now. That's that's exactly what I say. And I was like, no, 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 no. I, I want my daughter to grow up with I am healthy and energetic. I, I'm not, I'm mm-hmm. fat. Um, we need to we need to clone you, Beth, and put you in every house. <laughs> so yeah. but but it was really how you know my inner and outer voice is going to become her inner outer voice yeah what voice is that going to be you know 
Um, yeah. And I know that my mom, you know, my, my mom didn't mean it for us. That wasn't her, but we heard mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. you know? So anyway, ladies, thank you all so much. And um, mm -hmm. I hope those of you that have been watching have enjoyed this. Um, Thank you, Sarah, and others that have been popping in and out. Thank you, Sarah, for staying with us as well. Um, <laughs> and um, we will catch you all next week. Same time, same place. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.